Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome to my workshop. Now you may be wondering what this contraption is. It's a Dobsonian mount made by a company called Obsession that my friend has asked me if I can rebuild. This one has seen better days. It's had a hard life. It's probably 15 years old. It's been out in the damp and some of the components have started to stick and expand because it's made of chipboard. So I agreed that I'd make him a new mount for his telescope. He then said, oh, and can you make it so that it flat packs? So I'm going to see also if I can make it flat pack. Let's get tinkering. I'm making this telescope out of 80 millimeter, that's three quarter of an inch birch ply. The original was chipboard and suffered quite a bit from the damp. I've chosen birch ply because of its inherent rigidity and strength. This mount will be assembled and disassembled a couple of times a year when we go camping and I want the fixings to last so I didn't think chipboard would be suitable. My first job is to cut down the ply sheet into manageable sized boards using my track saw. The saw is very inaccurate so I use it exclusively for rough work. My workbench, with the router table flipped up and the lumbar support extended, can easily manage a full 8x4 board. For this cut, I've adjusted the sliding table saw to bring it as far forward as possible so that I've got enough depth between the fence and the blade to cut this piece of wood. This piece of wood is 610 millimetres and with this all the way forward I can cut pieces of wood up to about 800 millimetres. I don't normally leave it in this position because it sticks out too far in my small workshop. I normally push it forward so I've got about 400 millimetres of play on the sliding table before the front of the, of the saw. I can now start processing these smaller boards into pieces for the final parts. board here needs to be the same thickness as this board plus this board. Now when I've offered them up and checked I've got a slight discrepancy between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two boards through the table saw and just skim a little bit off the edge. Then if I then put this board through the table saw without moving the fence, it will make it exactly the same size. So the way I've set this up is I've used the stop block here to push against. I've set the fence to 20 degrees which is the angle that I need to cut down here on these two pieces of wood. I've put the two pieces of wood on top of each other and I've stuck them together with masking tape. I've clamped the whole thing down to the sliding table using the sliding table clamp and I've raised the blade so that you can cut through both pieces at the same time. I was originally going to cut these separately and use the stop block as a way of registering both but I decided that this would give a, a more consistent cut if I just did them both at the same time so that's my plan. That worked perfectly except I hadn't raised the blade high enough but that doesn't seem to have affected the cut. It's a very nice cut, they're perfectly flush with each other, so um, that was the way to do it. I then flipped the boards over, adjusted the angle and cut the slope on the other side. These side pieces need a semicircle cut out to accommodate the altitude bearing, so I mark out and drill a pilot hole. And then cut out the semicircle 
using a hole cutter I'd bought for the purpose and my pillar drill. Note I've extended the table using an offcut of chipboard and blocks to support it on the bench. I also clamped everything down to ensure nothing moved while making the cut. Then using a sanding stick, I tidied up the cut and that was the sides cut to shape. Making a little jig so that I can get the circle that I need exactly the right size. My plan had been to cut the circle on the bandsaw, but my little bandsaw really struggles with curves on harder boards, so I just roughed it out. The table on the bandsaw wasn't really long enough, so I had to support the weight of the board. Also note the saw is clamped to the workmate so that it wouldn't move. I've roughed this out on the bandsaw and now I'm going to use my circle cutting jig on my router table to finish it off. I'm going to start with it slightly big and go round it a few times making it smaller and smaller until I get to the line. If you want to see a video on how I made this circle cutting jig then I'll leave a link in the video description. I've set this so that the radius is too large so I can then keep adjusting it to creep up on the line so I get it perfect. That way I won't be taking too much off with this small trim router bit. I could now sand the circle to tidy up any cut marks. For dust extraction I used a combination of shop vac attached to the orbital sander and my main dust extractor hose clamped close to the work. This worked very well. So I've drawn out on the base where everything's going to go. So this circle is the Lazy Susan on the original um, mount which I'm going to repl which I'm going to reuse then these lines here are the sides that's the back and then this is the other side and I've done this to work out whereabouts I can cut holes um, so that you can fit the cross dowels to assemble it so I think probably I'm going to do what the original did which is only have two cross dowels per piece <clears throat> if that proves not to be enough then we've still got the option of putting one in the middle but the hole to access it will have to be a lot smaller what you might notice is the distance from here to the back is smaller than the distance from here to the front that's because this line here represents the center of gravity i.e. the center of the altitude bearing and therefore I want that to go through the center of the telescope otherwise things won't work properly. Um, the reason the original went further forward and looked or oh, it basically had the same distance to here as to here as it wasn't folding because this one needs to fold um, these have to be a little bit shorter they're about an inch shorter basically um, but I don't think that will notice um, when you're using it. I then had to drill all the holes for the cross dowels. I did this using a jig I'd made. 
This improved the accuracy and re removed the stress of getting all 18 holes perfectly aligned. The final step for the cross dowels was to mark the positions of the holes in the part the dowels would mate with using pointed pins in the holes I'd already drilled. First I pilot the holes, flip the board and drill a shallow hole to accommodate the head of the bolt, then flip the board again and drill all the way through with a drill the same dimension as the shaft of the bolt. I mark the position of the holes on the other circular piece and using a hole saw, cut out larger holes. These will provide room for your fingers during assembly. I sanded these holes on the oscillating spindle sander. I can now glue the side piece to the back piece. This is needed so that the two sides can fold on top of each other. I clamped it tight for gluing using bench dogs and some thin wedges. I can now cut the stainless steel piano hinges to size using my rotary tool. I've lined this hinge up carefully, now I just need to mark where the screws are going to go. I pilot all the screw holes, there are 38 in total, and I'm now ready to start painting. I'd be interested in how you go about finishing projects. My approach is to sand vacuum and then wipe down the part with a tack cloth. Leave to dry, then repeat, but just sanding lightly with 220 grit paper. These parts had four coats. The manufacturer's instructions advised three coats, or two if already primed or painted. The paint was pretty expensive, and I ended up using almost all of it. But I've used this paint before, and it gives a very hard durable finish and is rated for external use with a 10 year guarantee. My own trust Dobsonian telescope mount used the same paint and is still good as new after five or six years of use. So I'm confident it is suitable for this application. Note the paper on the bench is to protect the workpiece from the bench, not to protect the bench from paint. This is the Lazy Susan that was on the original. I cleaned all the old grease off and then re-greased it with lithium grease. The originals the staples were just stapled on top, so that they would have actually been riding on the staple and scraping it slightly. I've just added a little countersink to these so that the nail is below the surface of the PTFE. I've added the original bolts and it's supported underneath with some wood so it can't drop out. Now I just need to fit this piece on top. And the washers that it came with and then these two nuts doesn't feel sticky 
the movement feels very precise. That noise you can hear is the roller bearings rotating. There's no there's no wobble in it. I can now assemble the hinges. To assemble the telescope, you fold out the sides, turn the whole thing upside down, fit a couple of location pins, lift the base over the location pins and fit the bolts, finally replacing the location pins for bolts. Then flip the whole thing the right way up. The whole process takes no more than a couple of minutes. Well, the telescope's complete. and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. The telescope is very smooth. In how it moves, there's no stickiness, it's just really nice to use. And now it can be folded away and packed in the car for when we go camping. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please leave a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, why not subscribe by clicking my logo? It's free, and YouTube will add some of my videos to your feed. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.